Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 10 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Imagine if a team signed Tony Romo right now, and then Romo led the game-winning drive on Sunday. Imagine if a team signed Nate Burleson right now, and then Burleson caught the game-winning touchdown on Sunday. Imagine if a team signed Jay Feely right Actually, can someone please do that? Please, for the sake of my eardrums. Anyway, the idea of someone coming out of the booth to play or coach has been done before. Bruce Arians did it when he joined the Buccaneers. Jason Witten did it when he joined the Cowboys again. But to do it mid-season and then make an immediate impact seems kind of insane. But amazingly enough, that's exactly what happened in 1986. One man was working as an analyst for the NFL Today on CBS. The very next week, he hit the game-winning field goal and helped his team win the game. This is the story behind the man who did it. First, we need a bit of context as to how this entire situation transpired. The man in question here is none other than Mark Mosley. If you recognize that name, it's probably because he's the only kicker in NFL history to win the MVP when he won it in 1982 after hitting 95% of his kicks during the strike shortened season. He was a solid kicker in the league for a long time, spending the bulk of his days with Washington, and was still good after that 1982 campaign. While he obviously couldn't replicate his MVP season, he led the league in points scored in 1983 and finished inside the top 10 in field goal percentage in 1984. After 1984, though, things quickly went south. During the 1985 season, he hit less than 65% of his kicks, which ranked inside the bottom 10 of the league amongst all qualified kickers. And in 1986, he was atrocious. Through the first six games, he went 6 for 12 on field goals, and missed two extra points. When you're missing over a kick per game, that's not good. The straw that broke the camel's back came on October 12, 1986, when Washington lost 30-6 to to the Dallas Cowboys and Mosley missed the field goal and an extra point. Considering he was 0-3 for on his last three field goals, had missed 14 of his last 27 field goal attempts dating back to last season, and was 38 years old and on the decline, the writing was on the wall he was unceremoniously released by Joe Gibbs the following day, saying he'd fallen below the 50% success rate, and I did not feel he would turn it around. Mosley had been with Washington since 1974, which was so long ago that Joe Theismann was returning punts for them back then. Learn more about that in the upper right corner. And just like that, he was done. While Mosley said that this wasn't the end and he was looking forward to hopefully kicking elsewhere, that opportunity never came. Nobody wanted to sign a 38-year-old kicker who wasn't good anymore and had essentially a coin flip's chance at missing a field goal. And so, Mosley finally got a job a month later when he signed with CBS and joined the NFL Today as an analyst. He would lose that job before the season ended, though, because someone gave him another shot as a kicker. On November 23, 1986, the Cleveland Browns took on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cleveland had one of the best kickers in all of football in Matt Barr. He led the league in field goal percentage in 1983, finished inside the top 10 in field goal percentage in each of the following three seasons, and was having an unbelievable 1986 campaign before this game, hitting all 26 of his extra points and going 19 for 23 on field goals. Remember that back in 1986, anything above 80% was incredible. But after drilling a 25-yard field goal in the fourth quarter to give the Browns a 31-28 lead, Barr got hurt on the ensuing kickoff. He went for the tackle and tore multiple ligaments in his knee. While there was no footage of the play that I could find, there is this footage of Barr getting help off the field. And just like that, his season was done. Fortunately for the Browns, they didn't need a kicker the rest of the way, as they won 37-31 in overtime to improve to 8-4 and, and remain atop the AFC Central over the Cincinnati Bengals. Unfortunately for the Browns, they now needed to find a kicker. And they knew just where to turn to. Later that day, while Mosley was still working on the show, he was notified by a CBS assistant that the Browns were looking at it. Keep in mind that this was 1986. Information didn't travel too quickly, 
there were no highlights of the play, and if there were any highlights of this game, CBS wouldn't be the ones getting them, as CBS showed NFC games while NBC showed AFC games. Especially back then, you never saw highlights of games from the opposing conference. So Mosley thought that this was a prank. Why would the Browns want to sign him when they had Matt Barr? Then he learned about the injury, and realized this was serious. This was going to be Mosley's shot at coming back into the league. He flew out to Cleveland the next day, and then competed with Brian Franco for the kicking job. Franco was one of the best kickers in the USFL. During his most recent season in 1985 with the Jacksonville Bulls, he went 45 for 45 on extra points and made over 82% of his field goals. It was a battle between those two guys for the starting job. The end result was pretty even, but in the end, the Browns went with Mosley. Browns Executive Vice President Ernie Acorsi said that the reason to sign Mosley over Franco was simple, saying Mark's a veteran who has kicked in cold weather and on grass. He's won big games. We're not talking July 15th here. We're talking December 1st. We're not expecting him to make 60-yard kicks. We're expecting him to make pressure kicks. As a side note, even though Franco didn't get the job, he impressed the Browns enough that he was brought in to be their kicker during the scab games in 1987. I made a video about the first Browns scab game against the Patriots. Check that out in the upper right corner. On November 23rd, Mosley was in the studio analyzing NFL games. On November 30th, Mosley was playing in one as the Cleveland Browns took on the Houston Oilers. And sure enough, Mosley was asked to make a pressure kick when he lined up for a 29-yard field goal in overtime to give the Browns the win. And then this happened. The game was on the line for the battle-tested 10-year veteran. All right, here we go. Snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is up. It is good. Game, set, and match. Cleveland Browns, 13-10. Mark Mosley has done it. Welcome to Cleveland, Mark Mosley. Mosley drilled the field goal, and the Browns won the game 13-10. He hit an extra point and made another field goal as well, having a heck of a debut. Afterwards, Mosley said that even though the kick was a lot like many kicks he made in his career, it felt strange wearing that orange helmet. He was fortunate for the opportunity, saying that the previous six weeks were tough, and that he really thought his career was over. And the weirdest part about all of it might have been just how new Mosley was to the team, and how quickly he became the hero. Look at the man who tried to lift him up after the game in the celebration. That's Herman Fontenot, a second-year running back on the Browns. He had never met Mosley before that interaction. The two were never formally introduced to each other, though Fontenot said that he was his idol growing up. Mosley played the rest of the season with the Browns, hitting 6 out of 7 field goals and 13 out of 14 extra points. Though he struggled a bit in the postseason, missing 3 field goals in the divisional round against the Jets, he came up clutch yet again when it mattered most, hitting a 22-yard field goal to tie the game in the fourth and hitting a 27-yard field goal in double overtime to win it. After the 1986 season, Mosley was done and never kicked again. But that 1986 season was an absolutely crazy one for him. From working NFL games to being the hero in one of them. All in the span of a week. Be sure to like this video and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping on the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.